Well, hello, and welcome to Sunday Encore, where we have candid conversations about the practical applications of Sunday's message. Well, hey, we're back for another episode of Sunday Encore, where we sit down to recall the truths of Sunday's message and consider some practical applications to our everyday lives. Hey, thank you so much for listening. If you're a faithful Sunday Encore listener, why don't you go ahead and click the link and share it with a friend or family member and allow them to be encouraged and blessed and that we could reach more people as you continue to share. We are here today, as always. I am Spencer, one of your hosts, and I've got Adam with me, and we're ready to chat. Ready to chat. Just a day late. Normally, we get out this on Monday, but yeah. it's Tuesday. Just, it's the week. It's the week. It's the week leading up to Easter. Yes. Excited for Easter weekend. It's going to be so amazing. Um, Good Friday at 11 o'clock, communion service, yeah. reflection, just kind of a beautiful oh. moment of just contemplating the cross. And yeah, the, oh, so good. It's going to be great. And then we have prayer Saturday morning, and then getting ready for Easter Sunday at 9 and 11, celebration, yep. service, it's resurrection awesome. Sunday. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. It's just, it's funny because it's not like we do anything different. It just is different. Jesus is alive. <laughs> He he is alive. It, he, but, he is alive. But, but you know what I mean. I don't know. It just it just hits different. It's it like it's so. Different. It is different. We 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 often say it's Easter Sunday is like Super Bowl Sunday, and it's funny if, when you watch the Super Bowl, all they're doing is playing a football game. It's so true. <laughs> it's the same game they've been playing all year. Yeah, it just feels different. It feels different, you know. And uh, and I think Easter Sunday is just it's like hey we're gonna we're gonna worship we're yeah. gonna open God's word we're yeah. gonna worship we're gonna gather together as a church yeah. We're going to have a great time together, community and fellowship, but it just feels different. Celebrate the risen sun. It's so good. It's anyway, so good. So we, excite, we invite you to come, be yeah. part. If you live in the county, be here. It's going to be yeah, great. Be here. Don't come alone. Bring, bring someone with, with you. you. Yeah. Pick a friend, a family member, a neighbor, and bring them with you. Invite them out to church. It's going to be an incredible experience. It's good. And yeah, we're so excited. Yeah. So we just wrapped up our series called The Ministry of Jesus, mm. where we were just looking at really Jesus' proclamation of himself, of his of uh, he, that he is the fulfillment of mm-hmm. the prophecy that Isaiah kind of gave out, and Isaiah gave out, prophesied in Isaiah sixty one, yeah, and uh, where he said, "The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set the oppressed free, proclaim the year of the Lord's favor." Mm. Really, so we see this is really the right the very beginning of Jesus's ministry before he goes into his next three years, where he is he's doing it in the physical setting the blind free Mm -hmm. but he's also doing it there's a spiritual connotation to everything that he's doing and he's also in some ways foreshadowing of what is about to happen after the death and the resurrection right and obviously people don't fully understand that but he but he obviously god does Mm -hmm. and so he's just he's setting up this idea of ministry and showing us the better way and so we've been spending the last three four weeks just kind of working through this as we prepare our hearts for really the biggest ministry of Jesus is that he took our place. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. he took our place on the cross and he died. He lived a life that we couldn't live and he died a death that we should have died in order that we, in order that we could live uh, with God forever, mm-hmm. you know? And so we just been spending time talking about how he is, he is the good news. He is, he's not just something he brings. You know, we talked about, he was not santa claus or the easter bunny or the tooth fairy who brings something good mm-hmm. but he is the good news he is the substance and the mm-hmm. source of all we need that yeah. he is the freedom for the captives that his power his ability to heal our physical wounds is just a is just a taste for us to see and to believe that he has the power to heal our spiritual wounds mm-hmm. you know it's like hey you think you think only God can heal the, heal the physical? I mean, heal the spiritual? Well, I'm going to heal the, heal the physical mm-hmm. to show you that I can do both. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I love that dialogue he has with the Pharisees. He yeah. just kind of like drops the mic on them. And, totally. And then we, you know, recovery of sight to the blind, how he intentionally, we were intentionally designed to see God, to know God. That was from the, Adam and Eve in, in the Garden of Eden is to walk with God, to know God, but sin blinded us and we lost what we already had. Yeah. And uh, how God wants to give us not just physical sight to the physically blind, and though He did that, but to also heal our spiritual eyes to see God, to know God clearly. And then this week we just talked about how He came to set the oppressed free, mm. and we just realized that there is this this 
burden sometimes that we carry in this world that weighs us down. And Jesus tells us, are you tired? Are you burnt out on religion? Are you worn out? And I love how he says, I am the antidote. Look to me. Mm. Like you got this virus of worry and doubt, and anxiety, oppression. I'm the antidote to this. Mm. You know, you can try to do it in your own strength. You can mm-hmm. try to find hope and peace and joy in your own abilities, your own, you know, disciplines. I said, it'll never work. Yeah. You got to come to me. I'm the antidote. And he says, learn from me. I love how the message paraphrase says, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Mm-hmm. And uh, he says, I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you, but keep company with me, stay with me, and learn how to live freely and rightly, mm-hmm. and lightly rather, freely and lightly. And I just feel like that's just a, a beautiful picture of like, hey, when Jesus Jesus says, if you learn from me, if you follow me, be my disciple, you can take my yoke, which is my teachings, and you can learn from me and follow me. And really, my my yoke is really easy. It's just love God, love people, stay close to me. It's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. You know, everything. You don't need to worry about everything else. Don't mm-hmm. let anything else set you apart. And so, um, I just think for us, that's a, just a great reminder because I think we can take on more than we're meant to carry. You know, we've we've talked about this even with preaching or with ministry that we totally. carry a burden that we're not meant to carry yeah. of trying to be the heal, like be the healer, be mm-hmm. the fixer in our own strength, our mm-hmm. own mind, our own gift sets and realize, Hey, there's those, I can't do those things. Mm-hmm. And we take on a burden that we're not meant to carry. It means we're carrying a weight. We're not designed to carry, which means it'll crush us, which means it'll crush you. Yeah. And Jesus says, no, 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 you got to come to me. I'm the antidote. Yeah. I'm, I'm the one who, you, who will carry those things for you. And so, you know, we just, we just spent the morning just looking at the story of, kind of the demon-possessed man who was far from God, isolated, Mm -hmm. imprisoned, just kind of he had no purpose, and uh, he was incomplete, and how Jesus came and and rescued him. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of finding our story in his story, you know, of what is it like? Like I I love how his story is white-labeled in the sense that there's no name to this man. Mm. He's just the man. Yeah. And Jesus crosses the lake to meet this man, to get back into a boat, to go back across the lake. Mm. Just kind of an interesting interesting perspective. It really tripped me out. And it I actually learned a lot that I didn't know. I've heard this story and preached this story. I did not realize it was um a Galilean yeah. land. Yeah. I didn't because Jesus is very explicit in many occasions that he's come for the children of Israel, but mm-hmm. then he just does this one random thing yeah. and goes to the Gentiles and then just leaves. Yeah. It's so weird. It does feel bizarre, doesn't it? But I I I learned that. I did not know that at all. It was really cool. He had, yeah. So he goes to, obviously from the text, it's the text. We didn't read the text, but there's a part in the text in, Ma- in Mark's gospel chapter five, where after he heals this man, everyone's freaked out. Yeah. And they say, you got to get out of here. Yeah. And so he, they kind of push him away, but that was no surprise to God. Totally. He's yes. not surprised by that reality. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so he, so this man represents us. He's this man who's far from God, who's imprisoned, who's incomplete, who's isolated. And I think every one of us can relate to those those feelings yeah. of being apart from God, of what it's right. like to be isolated, like isolation. We we all experienced isolation to some degree, right, during COVID. Totally. During this, like, you know, stay safe, stay home, protect everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was all done in the right, you know, nuanced language, it felt like. But we all felt that imprisoned isolation yeah. of, like, being disconnected from people. Totally. Very and, painful. You know, and what that does to your mind, yeah. you know, and your spirit and your soul. Yeah. And here is this guy who's isolated. Totally. You know? It's and it just in like I just just what that does, the darkness of that. Oh, and what that alone. Yeah. Let alone the demon. Yeah. Isolation. Just is isolation. Like, I mean, it's like the devil's biggest tool. It's the devil's playground. It's hundred percent. So it's fascinating how much that perpetuates even to where he was at yeah. at that point. You know what I mean? For sure. And so we get this Im- this image where this guy is living in the tombs, he's living in the graveyards, he's separated from the commu- from his community, his town. Mm-hmm. He's on his own. People are afraid of him. They tried to contain him. They tried to imprison him by mm-hmm. shackling him because he's violent and dangerous and they're afraid of him. But he breaks the shackles out. No matter how hard they try to shackle him, he breaks the shackles and they get shackled again. And um, and then he's incomplete. Like He's got no purpose. He's just howling. <laughs> he's... The scripture tells us that he's just howling in pain. Like there's just this this uncontrollable response that he just doesn't know what to do. And mm. we don't necessarily howl like you would howl at the moon, but we do snap. Mm. You know, when we're when we're 
when I know if I went through a season where I, I didn't have a purpose, I felt incomplete. Mm-hmm. And I would, and I'm, I, there was moments where I was, I felt isolated because I didn't really have anywhere to go. Yeah. I kind of felt in prison because I, I just felt like I was stuck. Yeah. 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 Felt stuck. And then those feelings made me feel incomplete. And I remember there was moments where I, I snapped. Like I would just snap at the people I love the most, the mm-hmm. people who love me the most. And it's just an uncontrollable response of what happens when you just lack all of these things that God has designed us to live out and mm-hmm. to, to experience. And mm-hmm. So so we hear so that Jesus comes and he and he gives them a new life and a new hope and a new joy and a new peace. And and so really, as we studied the story of Jesus, and we don't need to get into it, you can listen to the message, but I love how Jesus comes into his life He's into this guy who's so far from God, who's impressed, who's got a lot of, <laughs> you know, who's got a lot of battles he's fighting. He's living in darkness, isolated, imprisoned, incomplete. And Jesus comes to give him a new life. He comes to give him a, a, a new freedom. And he, and he comes to give him a new purpose. Yeah. New access to Jesus, new, new, perp, new freedom found in Christ, and a new purpose for Christ. And to me, I just think that's the hope that all of us have in him. Absolutely. You know, is that. This is this is when we say Jesus changes everything. This is what we're talking about, you know. Yeah, he changes everything. It was something that we didn't really hit throughout the series, but we talked about as we were kind of formulating it. Um, is that uh, that Greek word for saved or salvation? Right. Sozo, right. saved, healed, and delivered. Mm. And it was like this guy experienced all of that right. in a moment. Right. It's like not often do you see um, every function of it happen mm. in a moment, Yeah, but he did. He was, uh, t- from the best of his knowledge in that moment, believed in Jesus as the Messiah, right? So he was saved in that moment, and he was healed of his Oppressions. oppression yeah. and delivered fully yeah. from the demon and from his spiritual darkness. Yeah. It was like this full, you know, God always works in threes. It was like mm. this full three-way picture of yeah. the wholeness of what salvation could mean. Totally. And as you were talking about that, like isolated, incomplete, what's the other one? Imprisoned. Imprisoned. It's like those are the things yeah. that Jesus comes to fully save us from. Totally. And it's like the full package. It's not just one part of it. Mm. Um, and that without even, I don't even think you process that as no. you were saying it, but it, fully encapsulated it mm. which was beautiful yeah that's super cool yeah i wasn't smart enough to think about that well you're smart enough to, <laughs> to say it <laughs> um yeah that's great that's a good insight for sure yeah i think this story is interesting how in a moment in a moment he experiences all these things like yeah, that totally. you gotta, like that's the craziest thing i think this about these guys on the other side who who knew him you know, and they knew him, and we don't know how long he was like this, right? Scripture doesn't give us that kind of Yo, indication right, yeah. to know like how long he was been, been kind of possessed and kind of crazy and dangerous and loud and totally in pain. You know, like, but it was it seemed to be a long time because they put chains, it breaks the chains, they put yeah, chains, yeah, you know, yeah. like they're trying to control him. There was enough to process. There was enough, yeah. So that when the people came and they saw him, you know, sitting at the feet of Jesus, fully clothed and in in his right mind, yeah. They were afraid. They were like, "What just happened?" Yeah, because we we've known this guy for how long, and this has never happened. Totally, we've tried everything, and this has never happened. And so that's the fear. It's like they had a the fear that they had wasn't a holy fear of oh, this is the son of God. They had a like, "You're you got to leave because you, you we don't know what you are." Hmm. Like it wasn't they didn't know who he was. Hmm. They were afraid. They were afraid of I don't know. I don't, were they afraid of? What what he could do, the power that he had that they weren't ready to receive. I don't know what that was, but they were afraid. It could be a few things. Like I know there were certain parts of the story that we didn't get into that could have caused that. Um, it could have been that moment. It could have very well been um, kind of full circle, like an afraid, astonished thing. Because mm. they were so separated and and far away from seeing the truth yeah. that it terrified them. Mm. Um, whereas Buddy, hello, was close, was close, <laughs> sitting at the feet of Jesus, and he was astonished, and that's, he wanted to stay. He wanted to, he wanted to go with Jesus. He wanted to stay close. Yeah, that was beautiful. That's actually great. Dang, <laughs> it's crazy how you can see what what is the miracle can be viewed through fear or astonishment. Wow, proximity, proximity. 
And so here is you get this, and I know Luke's gospel tells us, Mark's gospel tells us he was sitting at Jesus, was sitting with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Luke's gospel says he was sitting at the feet of Jesus, Crazy. which is a beautiful picture. Yeah. Um, of just sitting at the feet of Jesus, very much like Martha, I mean mm-hmm. Mary, sitting at the mm-hmm, feet of Jesus mm-hmm. with the with the oil, just like just basking in His presence. You mm-hmm. know, Martha saying, "Get to work, get to work," and she's like, "I just want to be with Jesus. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do it. I just want to be here." Mm-hmm. You know, it's such a beautiful cor- correlation between those images of just mm-hmm. wanting to be with Jesus. And mm-hmm. then when Jesus gets back on boat, He's like, "I want to go with you," and Jesus is like, "No, you got to go and tell people wow. what I've done for you." Which again, he didn't do all the time. Sometimes he said that. Sometimes he said, "Don't tell anybody." Yeah, totally. But in this situation, he says, "Go and tell everybody." It's interesting that he and I didn't know this, but it's so fascinating that he said that to a Gentile. Mm. Like when you when you said you said something like he was the first Gentile miss, missionary, yeah. something like that. My mind was like, "That's wrong." Like that, I've never heard that. And then I did some research, and you were right. I was so shocked. Yeah, Paul, I was like, Paul hasn't been sent out yet. Paul is still a... No, I, it was even it was just the fact that it was a Gentile place oh, and he yeah, was yeah, a yeah. Gentile. I yeah. had no idea. And I was like, whoa. And most of the time, the people he tells to not say anything are, mm. are Jews. Mm. He says that a lot of times, but specifically people who are in proximity to yeah. synagogues and with the Pharisees yeah. and those kinds of things. Um, because, I mean, I can't go into the nuance of it, but they, they weren't... Their hearts were hard, and they they weren't ready. Revealed. They weren't yeah, ready. Exactly. Yeah, they weren't ready. But that that it was mind blowing, and I don't even know yeah. if there's like a big why, but it just was so mind blowing. Well, yeah, because the Samar- think about the Samaritan woman he found at the well. He let her go back to he, yeah. He went, she went back to the town and, and told a, everybody exactly. You know, but she was a Samaritan. She wasn't a Jew. I know we're not the only people to have this thought, but that's a really good thought hmm. as to whom he invites to go share and whom he does are non Jews. Hmm. Yeah, that's a study. That's a good study. That's an interesting thought. But so here, we, I, I think the, what I love about this story is that he goes and tells and he says, now you need to go and tell the story and you need to go and tell everybody. And so he gives them this new purpose, which is, again, we we have been, it's the same story that, that blind Bartimaeus had. He's like, all I know is I was blind, but now I see. Mm-hmm. I don't understand how God did it. Yeah. I just know he did it. Yeah. And, and this man's story is the same. He's mm-hmm. like, I was once crazy and oppressed and depressed and now i'm set free yeah and and jesus did it yeah and that's my testimony and yeah. i think sometimes we for, we we forget that the t- our testimony is just saying this is who i was and now this is who i am mm-hmm. and i'm not saying i'm per- i'm becoming more like christ but i don't know exactly how all that happened mm-hmm. you know there was a supernatural moment where jesus had gave me the grace to change and mm-hmm. he took away something and he gave me something mm-hmm. that I didn't deserve and yeah. I didn't earn, but God's grace it was sufficient and his power was made perfect in my weakness, as Paul would say. Totally. But that's my story. And I think this is the the purpose that all of us have as followers of Jesus is the Great Commission. It's like, hey, we gotta we gotta know, we gotta know our personal we gotta take the personal responsibility yeah. to build personal relationships with people that he's put us in with, to share our personal story mm-hmm. and to give a personal invitation. Mm-hmm. Like like if just Break it down to the simplest factors. If every one of us could do that with one person. Yeah. Whereas I'm, I just want to take, I, I have a responsibility as a minister, as a follower of Jesus. Yeah. Someone who believes in Jesus, someone who's in proximity with Jesus to follow the great commission, which is to go and tell mm-hmm. about Jesus. Mm-hmm. So that's not just the pastor's job or my small group leader's job nope. or my parents' job yeah. or my grandparents' job. Like this is my job as a follower of Jesus. So I have a personal responsibility to build personal relationships so where has God placed me? Yeah. You know, so he, he, this, this man, go back to your town. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Just go back to your town. Just go back to where you used to come from. And now you've been, you've been, just go back to the 10 towns in Galilee. Just go back. Mm-hmm. So he, go to, go to where you are, go to the people who know you, share them and tell them your personal story. They already know, but the fact that you're there sane and fully clothed is yeah, a testimony in and of itself. Yeah, totally. Just tell them your story and then give them the invitation to know Jesus too. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's a huge thing that I hear way too often um, that for those of you who might be listening who, you know, grew up in church and the classic, I don't have a testimony. Right. Or, you know, I wasn't filled with a legion of demons. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't have a radical transformation moment. No, but you did have a radical transformation moment. Mm, right. You were destined for something that wasn't with God. Yeah, a life without God. You you were dead and now you're alive. Mm-hmm. 
And I, I've said this to so many people, and I feel like it's kind of my thing to tell Christians this because I hear it so much. I hear it so much. I grew up in church. First of all, thank God you didn't have to experience yeah. that um, distance between you and him, um, and you don't want that. It sucks. Um, but you were once dead and now you're alive. That's mm-hmm. the, that like that you experienced. And we, you say this all the time. You experienced the greatest miracle you could ever experience yeah. on earth. Yeah. Um, and you have a hope and security for ever. Mm-hmm. That's a testimony. Totally. And that'll preach. Yeah. And it's like, even like little things like Jesus, like I'm less cynical or I'm less negative or I mm-hmm. see the beautiful things or I see the joy or, you know, I, I read the Bible differently. Now. Like that's a testimony. Don't minimize the little things. Totally. Um, because to someone who's far from God, it's a really big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I just want to encourage. Someone yeah, that's really like good. That. And again, like that, that just that just paints the picture. Again, you've said it already. Is that we Jesus didn't die for bad people. Yeah. Like it's not a bad good thing. Yeah. It's a dead alive thing. Yeah. And there's a there's a big nuance to that. And so, I think just having that appreciation, understanding that no, like. The, my relationship with Jesus does change not just how I, not just my eternity, though that's obviously a big part of it, but how I hear and process hardships and mm-hmm. how it, you know I can listen to the news or have a conversation with my family or navigate a, 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 a situation at work or whatever. All of these things are nuanced through now the lens of hope that I have in Christ. Because mm-hmm. without Christ, you know, you, you lack that that hope and that joy and that peace. Mm. And not only does it give you life, but he gives you the the gifts of the spirit that come with the life, you know? And I think that's the joy that we have in Christ. And that's the story we have to tell mm-hmm. is that, yeah, I'm not saying life is easy, but it's definitely easier Yeah, when we have Christ. Yeah. The hope that we have in him, the future that is secure in him. It's like, yeah, the road is hard, but I know where I'm going. Mm-hmm. And there's a sense of commitment to that. There's a sense of hope in that. When you don't have that hope, then every little journey is, and every little bump on the road is like a crater. Yeah. And so, yeah, which is, which is a beautiful story. So Jesus comes, and I think it's really interesting. We talk about imprisonment, isolation, and incompleteness, and how Christ kind of embodies that in Himself through the Easter story. Mm-hmm. It's just so He. This is the. This is the. Uh, this is where I think is beautiful. Is that. The, the real ministry of Jesus is that he actually took our place. Like he actually took it upon himself. He experienced in, he experienced isolation when he was separated from heaven mm. and separated from his disciples, like his earthly this family. Yeah, you know, he experienced imprisonment when he was shackled and nailed to the cross. He experienced incompleteness, and this is a crazy thought to consider: is that when God the Father turned his back on him. Because of the sin, your and I sin, my sin, that he bore. And the righteousness and the holiness of God could not be associated with it. And so God turns his back on him. And here you have Jesus on the cross saying, why have you forsaken me? Mm. And so you have this moment where the the Trinity, God's not broken, but there's a moment where there's a separate, there's an incompleteness because of what he had to do to to secure our our eternal future. Mm. And he took all that upon himself. He experienced it all. So you and I could be, and he made the way back to the Father by conquering sin, by conquering death as the final atonement so that you and I could have the way back to the God, mm-hmm. back to the Father. And I think that is, that's the beautiful, that's the mission of Jesus. That's the message of Jesus, that he loves you as you are, but loves you too much to leave you, leave you the way, way you are, that he provides a way back, that he is the way, yeah. the truth, and the life. And he didn't just talk about providing a way. He made the way, Yeah, you know? And that's the that's the journey that we have with Jesus, and that's the invitation that each one of us have the opportunity to accept, right? We talked about this earlier this week. Is that first uh, Second Corinthians five ten? It's like that he became he who knew no sin became sin, so that in Christ we might emphasis might become the righteousness of God. And the might is not a contingent contingent on him. No. He already did his part. Yeah. The might is contingent on how we respond to that. Mm-hmm. You know, are we going to receive that? Are we going to respond to that so that we can become the righteousness of Christ? Are we going to choose the narrow way, which leads to life? Or are we going to be deceived in the large, the, the, the wide, the, the wide road, mm-hmm. you know, that many find? And, uh, and I think that that's where we have to have this revelation of Jesus, where we get to see Jesus. And I understand, like blind Bartimaeus, like this man, 
this unnamed man that we don't know his name. There is a there is going to be a struggle. There is going to be a rustle, mm. right? You're, there's a part of you that's going to yearn for it, and then there's going to be either the internal voice or the external voice mm. who's going to tell you to be quiet. Mm-hmm. You know, and and we you have to have the courage to fight through those things, mm-hmm. and just have your first response. Let your first response be Jesus. Trust in Him. Humble yourself before Him, and let the power of God be your strength, in, and and do what only He can do in you. Yeah. You know? So we come to him, and he meets us in the middle there. He actually doesn't meet us in the middle. He meets us far beyond the middle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we no. just actually have to turn around. Yeah, yeah. He did all the, he did all all the, the hard work, work, all the heavy lifting. And so the ministry of Jesus is that he He took our place, and uh, he wants to open eyes. He wants to set us free. He wants to heal us, mm. restore us back into relationship with Jesus, re- re- back into relationship with the Father, and unite us in relationship with his son. And so I, um, yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a great story. Yeah. It's a great opportunity that we have. And so Easter Sunday, we get this beautiful opportunity to celebrate that even more. Yeah. Yeah. We can't wait. We look forward to you joining us this weekend for Good Friday at 11 or Easter Sunday at either 9 or 11 a.m. Thank you for joining us for Sunday Encore today. We pray this sparks Jesus-centered conversations in your home or small group as we continue to grow into an overflowing relationship with Jesus. Jesus.